Kaduna's state was grounded on Monday when organized labor started its five-day warning strike in the state. On Tuesday, Governor Nasu El Rufai declared the national president of the Nigerian Labor Congress wanted for economic sabotage. The NLC leader, Ayuba Waba, has in turn dared the governor. He led workers in a protest after he was declared wanted and his quoted to have said, let him come and arrest me. We're here and are waiting for him. Ayuba Waba now joins us via Zoom. Good morning, Mr. Waba. Thank you, good morning, and thank you for having me. Okay. How do you respond to all the allegations the Kaduna State Government has made, saying, you know, you're guilty of economic sabotage and that you're wanted, and also putting a bounty on you and, you know, promising people a handsome reward uh, for bringing you into the police? Well, uh, as you can see, I'm speaking from Kaduna, uh, because the laws are very explicit. Uh, first is that he has no such power to declare he wanted because he cannot be a, the accuser, he cannot be the judge, and he cannot also be the person tried. So you can see it's good abuse of power uh, because when people are power drunk, there is nothing they cannot pronounce. But basically under the law, he has no such power. Mr. Waba. Mr. Waba, can you hear us? Power, and that's why I keep saying that I don't have such power. Uh, okay. They are not being attended to. And uh, that's why the action has continued. Mr. Waba, can you hear us? Unfortunately, it seems we're having a bit of a, a hiccup there uh, from Mr. Waba. Well, we'll try to connect with him really uh, and shortly. Uh, anybody he's accusing, because he's not the accuser. Okay. Can you hear us, Mr. Waba? No, we're going to have to uh, see if we can reconnect with uh, Ayuba Waba, the uh, national president of the uh, uh, NLC uh, this morning. Uh, of course, to get a uh, live update on what's going on in Kaduna State after being declared wanted. Uh, of course, uh, I would also like to ask about the uh, little bit of violence that was uh, seen yesterday at yes. the protest, you know, thugs attacking the protest and how much that might also deter uh, them from getting out on the streets again uh, today. So it's, it's a pretty interesting time. Yeah, it's good to see anywhere he's safe. He's him safe and sound. You know, you know, yeah. we, we saw El Rufa yesterday, you know, talking about him presenting himself to the police. But yeah. yes, Mr. Wabak, are you still there? Are you about Wabak? If you can un unmute your device uh, so we can continue with this conversation. Yes, what I'm saying in essence... Uh, in all the pronouncements that have been made, you can see that there is no concern. And uh, you can see that uh, totally there is no leadership. Hmm. Because what are we responding to? We are responding to a situation where over 7,000 workers were sacked. We have the letters. And a particular provision of our labor law on the issue of redundancy has not been respected. And let me be very clear about the provision. The provision of the labor law, particularly section 20, made it very clear that before you contemplate sacking any worker, that you shall, and you, you know the word shall is not something you can just decide or not to decide to do, that the government or employer shall inform the trade union, or even where the worker does not belong to a trade union, his representative about one, the reason and the scope of the redundancy or sack. All of these have not been followed. What we saw was just issuing letter to workers. Okay. Um, sadly, uh, we really apologize for the network difficulties we're having connecting with Mr. Waba. But, uh, you know, very important views we have to get in here regarding what's happening exactly in Kaduna State with the NLC. Uh, Mr. Waba, can you hear us? In 2021, I'm not paid. Okay. So, so this is why we are here, and that's why it's a national issue that we have come to support the Kaduna workers. Because every effort by our unions in Kaduna has failed. They have not been engaged in line with the provision of the law about social dialogue 
and their right to collective bargaining have been violated. Uh, That's Waba. why they cannot produce any document to say that there was engagement okay. with labor. Mr. Because Waba. there is no CBA, that is collective bargaining agreement. Mr. Waba, I need to ask in you. in many places. So that's why we are here. Okay. And that's why the action is ongoing. So I can say that they are not responsible. And that is why the issue is going the way it is going. And therefore, we will continue to protect the right and interest of every worker. Every worker in any sector. Okay. If a worker is sacked without his benefit being paid, NLC will be there to continue to protect those workers. Okay, and Mr. That is Waba, why we are in Kaduna. I need to ask you this important question because this is something you've said repeatedly, you know, to all our colleagues across all, all media stations, citing Section 20 of the Labor Act, talking about, you know, the provision that the government must consult, you know, labor before they take such action like, you know, sacking any worker. So is the issue here the fact that the government sacked those workers or that they did not consult labor before sacking them? Also, if the Kaduna State government had sat with Labour to discuss this, to say these people are not qualified, they are not competent, you know, on all of these factors, we need to sack them. If, if Kaduna State government had sat with you to, to consult with you, like Section 20 of the Labour Act says, would it be different right now in Kaduna State? It is not consultation. Please get the facts very right. The law did not say only consults. There is a process. There is Section 20 A, B, C. First is that before you give them sack letter, when the process is completed, you have your list. You shall inform the trade union so that there will be a dialogue, so that you put the document on the table. These are the people I want to sack. These are the reasons. This is the scope. And therefore, we'll discuss and look at it. The second issue is that in such an exercise, the last to come into the service will be the first to go. And the last one is that before you issue letter, the money must be ready. So the point is not only about consultation, it's about the process. And when the process is the process of social dialogue is completed between labor and government, there will be an agreement. So what we are saying is that in all of this they are doing, because they have changed gear now to say it's because of lack of competence. But you require you re remember the official statement issued by the government to say that it's because of poverty of funds that they cannot spend between 80% and 90 something percent uh -huh. on paying of worker salary. And we debunk that. That's why they have changed here. We debunk that to say that the internal general revenue again alone, being generated by workers, is about 50.7 billion in 2020. And we know what comes in from FEC. So when we put the two together, we know that workers don't consume up to one third. And therefore, right. workers are their slaves. No, workers provide key services. So these are the facts that you need to be uh, uh, informing the public about what I said, so that we don't actually mix the information and All the right. facts. Ayuba, I want us to you now speak about the events from yesterday. Um, there are clips and uh, reports of uh, protesters being attacked by thugs. Uh, quickly speak on that. You know, how did that play out yesterday? Well, thank you very much. Uh, as early as six o'clock, we got the information because when when they were having the meeting. Uh, with their sponsors, uh, there was a conversation that was recorded. Uh, that conversation was forwarded to me as early as five in the morning, and I made efforts to call all the relevant security agencies. I also forwarded the clip to them. Uh, names were mentioned in the clip, uh, where they met, where money was distributed, and where people will be hired from. Uh, so basically, we thought that a proactive action uh, should have been taken because uh, the informations were already given. And because it was a peaceful process, we thought that uh, with, uh, with giving those information, we thought that people cannot, because people have a right. If they are countering whatever we do, they can go and have their own uh, protest, which they did. They, you remember they hired uh, youth between the age of 12 and uh, 18 to go and uh, protest. And I have the clip of also where they were pitched. I can send it to you. We have the clip is on social media already. When people are saying, how can I be called and uh, protest over just five, 500 naira? So basically, this is what played out. So... Immediately, we are just concluding. In fact, we are taking announcements and trying to conclude at uh, the Nepal roundabout. The governor himself, while I was trying to take announcement, the governor himself drove. So when he saw the crowd, I think he had to divert and enter the old Nepal office. We were told because the workers were there, because it is the power sector. Uh, they were trying to make sure that nobody comes in to vandalize their equipment. He climbed up to look at the crowd and immediately we were told that the talks were actually behind him. So from the same direction, they now uh, uh, approach our protesters, and our protesters also approach them. Uh, they were throwing stones because they were carrying matches, they were carrying guns, and then uh, sticks. So because of our number, 
our people also approached them. In the process, two were apprehended. And because they were throwing stone, one was trying to approach us. Uh, his colleague from the back threw stone and it hit him on the head. And he collapsed there. So basically, that is how we chased them away. Uh, and the police came and uh, we are shooting tear gas. In fact, what even prevented our people from actually apprehending all of them is because tear gas was being thrown also on our people. And uh, that's why I think they had to also uh, uh, disappear. Uh, even this morning, uh, I was informed very clearly as early as uh, five in the morning, uh, about 50 trucks of trucks were also hired. And uh, this time around, not even to where we are going to protest, is to our office where people are already assembling. And uh, we have also given this information to all the relevant security agencies. Our people are already uh, converged somewhere. They entered our office and they are carrying weapons and dangerous weapons. So this is how the country has degenerated. And this is a laughable stock. Nigeria will be a laughable stock in the Committee of Nations. As we can see all over the world today, the right to protest and strike is fundamental right, which is uh, covered by the UN Charter and uh, also the African Charter. Even in our Section 40 of the Constitution, nobody should be able to uh, make sure that the voice of the people are not heard. So they are afraid. Okay. They don't want this clear information to be heard. So, Mr. Because Waba, they thought that the number is so massive. M Mr. 7,000 workers, um, fact, they are on the street. I need, to, I need to ask you there this, Mr. No Waba. Apologies to Button, Mr. That Waba. Um, right now in Kaduna State, the Kaduna State government has said they will not compromise. They are not reinstating the workers. This is where they stand. And the NLC, on the other hand, says they will run the, 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 the strike till its full course and, in fact, will extend this to a nationwide strike. What do you foresee as the outcome of the situation in Kaduna and nationally? Well, I think the message has been passed clearly. And uh, you can see that because we have been very consistent with giving the correct information, everybody that has spoken has spoken to the fact that what is happening in Kaduna is something extraordinary. Is something that is not expected in democracy. Uh, is something that is a very crude uh, abuse of power. And basically, that is why we said after these five days, because the strike is still on, and uh, all, all the services that our workers provide have been withdrawn. Uh, so we said after these five days, certainly uh, the national action will flow because we cannot have thin gods that nobody can be able to speak to. As it is, you remember in most part of the country where you have such a situation, religious leaders will come in, even traditional leaders will come in, people of uh, goodwill will come in, but he listens to nobody. And that is why most of those people that have intervened, they have intervened from the fact of they are speaking as organization or as group, because they know that nobody can approach him, and uh, he listens to nobody. Uh, where you even disagree, as a person you spoke against him, your house will be demolished here in Kaduna. So that's why everybody right. is actually being conjured not to act or speak to the issue of tyranny that is taking place. So we are All consistent. Right. And Mr. we Mr. continue Obama, with this plan, as suggested. Uh, we have also put the federal government on notice because the state belongs to also a country. If the country is in disarray, or if there is a breakdown of law and order because of the uh, irresponsibility of one person, I think everybody in Nigeria should wake up to actually call him to order. All right. That is the Mr. point Obama, we are gravitating fin to. Finally, because we are not in a banana republic. Yeah, finally, I want you to quickly speak on... Law and constitution. If somebody will hire thugs to unleash terror on peaceful protesters, has he not breached the law? So who hired so the thugs, yeah. Mr. Waba? Those are the issues. We are going Mr. to Waba. all those things. Mr. Waba, Mr. 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 can you hear us? Processes to also Mr. Justice. Waba, can you hear us? We need, to, we need to get you in good authority here. If you're saying people hired thugs yesterday and that you got information at 5 a.m. that people hired thugs to your office. So who hired the thugs to attack the protest in Kaduna? Thank you very much. From the clip we have received, which I've shared with the security agencies, even when they are sharing the money, it's very clear. The Kaduna said so many hired thugs. That is not contractable. It's a fact. Right. They have not denied this fact. And basically, some of the... Uh, the handful of protesters that came has people that are even escorting them. All right, thank you in very much, Ayubaba. In 2017, when they brought talks and we apprehended the talks with some weapons, the person leading them was an essay. So basically, we are in a uh, terrain that we know what is happening. All right, thank you and very much, Ayubaba. We don't mix what we so do. Thank you. Thank you very much thank uh, you. for speaking with us this morning. And, uh,
We hope that, of course, uh, we can reconnect with you at the end of the day or tomorrow to get uh, more information. Thanks once again. All right, uh, this is where we wrap up the program. This is very interesting Wednesday morning, just uh, speaking with the NOC president there, Ayuba Waba. If you missed out on it and you want to catch up on these conversations, remember to join us on our uh, social media platforms at PLOS TV Africa on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. I am Osao Gye Ogbon. And I am Aneta Felix. Have a great day.